Hey up troops, hey Littleton here again, and it's time that we did another Defender tier list video. The meta's shifted since we last did it, and there's a few operators who I put lower down, who I think are going to find themselves a little bit higher up this time. Based on the video we did the other day about the TDM meta that's out there at the minute, if you haven't watched it, it's the video before this, go and have a look. Um, I think certain operators need to be moved up and down. Now, what's difficult when I do these is different ELOs play different ways, if you know what I mean. If you're playing in silver... Attackers don't drone that often, therefore mute's not that useful. If you play in champ, the attackers drone quite a lot generally, uh, and therefore mute's really good. So it's I'll try and find a balance, but we'll get started with Alibi. And Alibi, kind of, what do you call Alibi? A trap operator? I think you probably would. Really good gun, impacts Bayleaf, good operator, three speed. Um, I think Alibi still sits in... Bro, A or B. I want 8.5. I'm going to put Alibi in B. Because I feel like a, a utility is is good, it's okay. But if you're if you're not in a rush, if you've droned it out, it really doesn't fa um, pose that much of a problem. A Rooney still A for me. I'll try and rattle through these as much as I can because I know I can talk for a little while. So apologies if this drags on. A Rooney, look, no, you put in with the way that the TDM meta is. Right, I'm going to talk about this TDM meta a lot this video. People tend to rush. They don't tend to drone as much. They tend to just walk into the building, and you find yourself on defense. You're going. How is he there? Why is he so confident? How does he know? Why has he just walked through that door? And it actually makes no sense. You're thinking, why has he done that? Or she done that? They've not droned. They don't know that nobody's there, but they just walk in. They're so confident. A Rooney prevents that slightly. You don't want to be using a Rooney gate away from sight too far. Like if you were playing Legion, you could put traps away from sight to slow him down. A Rooney generally needs to be used around sight, on sight doors, and, and to stop people rushing through, through busy areas, through busy doors, you can't really get much uh, much better than a Rooney, really. You think about clubhouse basement on the double door at the bottom of main stairs. You're putting a Rooney gate there. You just forget about it until you hear a Rooney gate go. That's the beauty of a Rooney. It gives it such a good sound, like an audio cue. You can just put something on a doorway and forget about it until you hear that a Rooney gate burns. So, yeah, still a really good operator. The only thing that lets a Rooney down for me, in my opinion, is one weakness is a guns. I don't think the, the, the Rooney's all that good at the minute with the capacity. What is it, 16, 17 bullets? If you've got if you've got like a one v two, you're struggling with the roan. You like the SMG eleven. Uh, however, the DMR. If you're good with DMRs, it's a great weapon on defense. I am terrible with DMRs because my first shot accuracy is awful. So she's not great for me in terms of the weapons departments. But being able to make rotates for free, great utility, definitely a. As army. Now this is an interesting one. If you're playing champ elo or high elo, as army goes in at S, no question. If you're playing lower elo, a zombie probably sits somewhere here or here. Um, because in higher elo, people have to clear the utility that's in the way. And a zombie provides loads of that. If you're in lower elo, people just walk through the door. But overall, a zombie still sits in S, no questions asked for me. Um, you can still, even in lower elo and higher elo, you tend to see it play differently. In higher elo, she'll make uh, blocking lines of sight and make shields. In lower elo, you tend to see them blocking doorways and over windows and stuff. Um, so, yeah, interesting the way it's played across uh, the, the, the two different elo levels there. Uh, but definitely S tier, straight away. Uh, Bandit. Uh, oh, I love Bandit. He's one of my favorite defenders. He's who I when I first started playing the game, I played a ton of Bandit. I have to be honest. Bandit probably sits there now, doesn't he? Bandit probably sits there now. Which is upsetting because I really like him. I wish he was here. The reason Bandit sits there for me, with the introduction of um, side utility EMPs, pocket EMPs, the, being able to Bandit trick now is almost impossible. It can still be done on certain sites where you, um, the floor below you is is solid, but there's not many of them anymore. You think about like Office on Skyscraper, um, CCTV on Clubhouse, and various other sites that you would normally trick. Um, and it's not that good anymore when it comes to that. It's st you still want to take some kind of wall denial because you still want to have to force the attackers to coordinate. Get Yes, they might have EMPs. Yes, they might have a Thatcher, but make them do that still. Don't make it easy for them. Don't go, oh, Bandit's rubbish because it's so easy to counter now. I will just won't bother putting wall denial on because then it's free. Make them struggle. You don't know that EMPs might get spawn peaked. They might miss their EMPs. They, the EMP player might not be playing with the heart breacher and might go somewhere else and get killed, and then they're stuck. So you've still got to make it difficult for attackers. <laughs> I think with the in, with getting grenaded from below being so common these days as well, that makes Bandit slightly weaker. 
Yeah, he goes in a C. Pains. It's still got a great gun and a C4, obviously, but yeah, he, he goes in there for me. Castle. Now, this is an interesting one because if you use Castle right, he's really annoying. And if you use him wrong, he's really annoying, but it's your own team. Castle goes in B. The UMP with the extended barrel and a 1.5 is actually all right, you know. Um, obviously, he's got his super shorty. Prox mines are a bulletproof, I think, if I'm right. Um, and he just causes a problem. If you've got a sledge, he's no issue. But the beauty of Castle is he absorbs attacker utility. Even though getting rid of a castle barricade if you're playing Ash is no problem, right? But that's one of your charges gone. If you're getting rid of a castle barricade if you're playing Zafir, no problem. But now you've only got one impact grenade from Zafir's launcher left. Do you know what I mean? So, and if you've got a Gon 6, all right, that's your Gon 6 gone. Nothing else. If you've got a Malusi Banshee on the other side of that castle barricade, someone uses the Gon 6 on the castle, what are they getting rid of the Malusi with? So castle's all about absorbing utility from the attackers, making them use their utility on castle before anything else. So... Still a great operator. You've got to use him right. I'm half tempted to put him here, actually, at the minute. But I'm not, again, I kind of want a tier in between. But I'm going to stick him there. Cavera can get in the mud for me. Actually, no. No, Andy. No. Cavera can't get in the mud at the minute. Cavera can go up a tier. And the reason Cavera can go up a tier is nobody drones. Everyone just runs into the building. And if you're not droning, where's the... If you do drone, Cavera's like... Not here. Cavera's down here. If you don't drone. If you do drone, sorry, if, if you don't, let me take that back. If you don't drone, Cavera's up here. If you do drone, Cavera's down here. So if you can't be bothered to drone out the Cavera, she's going to cause you problems. If you do drone out Cavera, she's poo. So higher elo, not useful. Lower elo, very useful. And you see a band still at, at lower elo. But even like in plat now, people are just walking into the building. And if that's the case, take advantage of Cavera. Clash, this is controversial. Clash is going here for me. Most people put Clash down here. But Clash goes here. If you play, I think I said this in the last video, but if you play Clash properly, and two are advantages, and two are, uh, what's the right word? Like two are, uh, I want to say benefit, advantages is fine. Two are advantages. There's a word that I'm thinking of, but I can't think what it says. Um, it's bugging me. No, forget about it. If you play Clash uh, it's getting to me. If you play Clash to um, to the best of her ability, Clash is really oppressive. If you were to play on Shally, on Piano Double Door, and you stand in the Double Door, an attacker's got a Nager, use Kali to move your shield, maybe use a Nomad charge on you, again, you've got to absorb that utility. But what people do as Clash is they walk towards attackers, zapping them as they go. The only weakness you have as Clash is if you're close to the attacker. Don't walk towards them. Stand back, zap them, and if they go out of range, let them run away. And as soon as they come back, zap them again. Stop walking towards them. You don't need to do that. Because you'll walk towards them, keep zapping them, keep zapping them, then your shield will run out of charge, and then what do you do? And you're stuck. So yeah, if you use Clash properly, she sits there. If anyone can think of the word I'm thinking of, get it in the comments. Doc, got a bailiff now. Still, still not much for me. It's got a bailiff, MP5 with a 1.5 is class. Utility is okay. Needs line of sight, can miss. Um, he's all right, Doc, but he's still sits in C for me. Not much to say about him, really. It, he's another one of those operators that fits into this TDM meta where I could think of almost every operator down here I would rather have on my team than a Doc. Um, Echo, bash, no questions asked for me. No questions asked. I love playing Echo. You can play Supernova Bearing, or you can play the Silenced MP5. The amount of times I've been playing Echo recently, but using one drone in sight to cover the default plant spot, and using another drone aggressively. Um, there's the classic one in Clubhouse, where you know there's a hatch in Strip. Send the drone up out the hatch, and then you jump out of gym window onto highway. I did it the other day when I was streaming. Works really, really well. But use one drone to deny the default plant. If they don't plant default, you can't do much about that. But if they don't plant default, use the other drone to be aggressive and to, if you're playing in a stack and you've got someone who's a particularly good gunner, a bit like Deepak did in Rogue and Berlin, um, or, well, it's Rogue, uh, it was Rogue, it's Koino. Drone, like, used to drone um, crying and spoit and canto around the map. So, with Echo on defense, do that for your your, uh, your teammates if they're if they're a decent gunner, but also use it yourself. But being a 2-2 now as well, impacts and a shield, there's not many shields knocking about anymore. Really good op, I think, at the minute. Ella, uh, got a shield, I suppose. A gun's all right. 
Good capacity in the gun. Utility's all right. Al probably goes there. Just a proper middle of the ro road uh, defender. If she doesn't have that shield, she's probably down here. But without difficult shields are to come by now. Um, yeah, sits there. Um, I need to shave this tash off, by the way. It's really tickling my lips. Fenrir, no questions. Boom, straight up here. No one knows what to do. No one knows how to defend. One of the best things about Fenrir is being able to place five traps down and then turn three on. And then when you realize the push is coming the other way, you go, oh, okay, I'll turn them on instead. So let's like, think about border as a classic example. Most people push armory wall, right? So there's a lot of utility that goes over to armory wall. If all of a sudden they do an east push through the east balcony, through um, archives, all of a sudden you've got no utility there or little utility over that side. What do you do? Well, with Fenrir, you turn off the the FNATs at the armory door and you turn on the FNATs at the archives or East door. So, and I think it needs changing a little bit where if I'm in an FNAT and I shoot the FNAT, I want my vision to come back like that. Whereas in FNATs at the minute, you tend to shoot the FNAT when you're in it and the effects of it take like a couple of seconds to go away. And I think for me, if you find the FNAT and you shoot it, the effects drop straight away, in my opinion. I kind of guess why in sort of realistic terms it doesn't because it's smoke and there would be smoke in the air and it would take for a while for the smoke to dissipate, I guess. But in terms of a game, if I find that F9 and destroy it, I want it shifting. Uh, Frost goes in at A. Great gun. Good utility for people who don't bother checking, especially in this meta at the minute. Uh, got the shield, got the setup with the shotgun. Just a great all-round operator. Not much to say about Frost. Fits in well. Goyo uh, probably goes... Lost his C4. I think Goyo goes there. In theory, Goyo's quality. 80 seconds of area denial with a big area as well is fantastic. I tend to find that the canisters get shot, what they call Vulcan canisters, tend to get shot early. Um, he gets four. It, it, in theory, Goyo's really good, but in practice, it doesn't always go that well. Great gun, though. That Vector with a 1.5 is a laser. But, yeah, just, I don't know. I, again, I'm, I want to put him here, but I'm going to go there. Jaeger. This is a tough one, isn't it? I think he still has to go. Mm. I, I'm putting him there. I don't think you see that. Many nades anymore, really? Yes, you got, what is it, knock eye on a glass and sledge? Mm, no, nah, maybe yeah, Jaeger goes there. It's, it's utility is still fantastic. And you know what? There's more than nades you can catch as well. Um, just being able to burn you. So, like Salmas, I was playing Outback last night and I got smoked by a Jaeger who burned two of me Salmas when I was trying to open a wall. It's two ADSs behind the, behind the door. It was really annoying. Um, yeah, Jaeger has to go there. Cade goes here. Again, Cade isn't that isn't as strong now we've got the pocket EMPs, but it's so much easier to Cade trick than it used to be because with Thatcher not being on the board, obviously. But now you can put like one Cade either side of the wall, they burn one side, then they throw the second EMP to burn the other side, and in that time you pick the first one up and throw it back in the middle of the wall so it covers both, and it, it works all the time. You can put Cades in snazzy places that you can't um, put bandit charges it causes, if you see a Cade on the board and you're trying to get a wall open, you know it's going to be a tough one. As long as Cade's playing it well, it's it's tough. Capcan probably goes up here, I reckon, nowadays, you know. I think Capcan goes up there. People don't check doorways. Do I die to Capcans all the time. I, in fact, I died twice last night to Capcans. Um, but people don't check doorways as much as they used to. Everyone's rushing everywhere. I'm just thinking, you know, Dot goes there. Um... A quick change on Dogger. Yeah, Capcan's S tier at the minute, man. So good. People just don't check. And you can take advantage of that. Legion. Legion, at the minute, is an S tier operator. Again, I would probably want somewhere between the two here. But Legion slows the enemies down so much. You, get, you can have three goo mines out on the map by the time an enemy's realistically pushing them. And that means you can cover the busiest areas of the map where everyone rushes these days. If you want to cover red stairs on Villa, bang a goo mine on there straight away. The only thing is, if if an enemy's droning, again, this comes back to the same thing as um, as mute. If an enemy's droning, they see the goo mines. It's quite easy to see on a drone. It's the same height. 
they see the goo mine and they get they shoot it and it's very hard to hear and you don't even know that goo mine's gone. So but the amount of times people don't drone and get caught in goo mines, it, I think having a lesion on a lot of sides these days is massively advantageous, and I think he's gone up in the meta, especially being uh, having an extended barrel on his gun because there's very little recoil on that gun, and the extended barrel does a decent chunk of additional damage. Maestro, I think Maestro has to go here, doesn't he? I just really like Maestro, and I think in theory his gadget's quality. With the introduction of um, gone sixes, um, obviously a lot more operators that can get rid of maestro cams quite easily you can just punch them to smash the glass he has been nerfed but he's still useful and can still cause problems but you've got to think a little bit more about where you put the cameras um and don't play him like echo don't um don't play the i'm going to wait for him to plant and use the maestro cam strategy because it doesn't work very well try you, you've got to hit almost every shot of a maestro camera and that takes almost as much time as it takes to plant so it's almost impossible to stop unless the attacker's already low. Where Maestro is best used for me is probably early round these days. So when, so let's just think of Villa, for example. Attackers are uh, sending drones into study to try and see what's going on in study, and you can snipe three or four drones at the start of the round quite easily. That's where I think Maestro is best used. Um, not for plant denial, which is what people used to do traditionally. Malusi, bang, no questions. Almost, if Malusi was still a two-speed, I'd probably put it here at the minute. Again, you can probably see him leaning more towards trap operators because it slows the enemy down so much. Malusi's great. Three-speed can be annoying sometimes, but a, a gun's good. Um, and those Banshees, I know they're easily um, destroyed once it pops open. You just shoot it, but you get that sound. And in this rush meta, this TDM meta, that's what you need. Mirror, still a great op. I don't... I think you have to put mirror there. There's, unless mirror's on a soft floor, it's almost impossible to push. You just have to attack from a different side. That's why she gets banned so much. Um, got a good secondary shotgun for uh, sight setup. C4, great gun. Just a great all-round operator. If, if there's a mirror on the board and you're not using a mirror, you're probably trolling a little bit unless you're on a specific side. I can't think of many sides where mirror isn't up there with the first off five operators I'd choose. Mozzie. Mozzie goes in B. The reason I say that is how many people drone these days? Well, people still do drone. I, I'm, I'm ex exaggerating a bit. People still do drone, but nowhere near as much as they used to. Um, Mozzie still has C4. The Commando is better than the Roni. Don't come at me. The Commando is an unreal gun with an extended barrel. It's so, so good. Uh, he's a cool operator. The reload animation's class. Um, but, yeah, I just... <laughs> he's great for drone and island, and higher elo is probably here, but... Being able to, to catch three drones, and if people aren't droning, what's he good for? Less people are droning these days, is, is my point. And that's why probably my favorite defensive operator, Mute, kind of, I want to put here, because he's great. But again, if, if people don't drone, is he as good as he used to be? Probably not. Yes, you can mute claymores or air jabs, and you can do a bit of wall denial, although his wall denial days are, are far behind him, because he's just not very good at wall denial anymore. Um... Yeah, probably get rid of Mute down to... I think he still has to go there. He's so versatile. Obviously, the, the best gun combination in the game, in my opinion, with the SMG-11 and the SAS shotgun that I can never remember the name of, it, M509A1 or something like that. Um, but yeah, if people drone less, he, he drops down from here, down to here. Oryx. I'm putting him there. Yes, I know he's... Gun's great. He's He's fast. Can burst through walls. He's got a bailiff. But what does he bring to the team? Nothing apart from prox mines. That's it. I, I would rather see almost every other operator above him than an Oryx on my team. If you're playing Oryx and you're roaming, why aren't you using Legion? Is it because he's got a bailiff? If that's the case, you've got to ask your teammates to try and open hatches. Sorry, I've got hay fever and my left nostril is itching like mad. I'm trying to sort of do it casually, like as if you won't notice. Oh, no, oh, I've got itchy nose. And everyone's going, why is he itching his nose like that? Just scratch it. Oh, right. Yeah, Take if you're taking Oryx, take Legion. If you're taking Oryx, take Alibi. I, yeah, that's a point, actually. If you're taking Oryx, take Alibi, because other than bursting through walls, she still has an, uh, a bailiff. So, yeah, it just doesn't do anything for me. Pulse, very, very site-specific, probably here, actually. 
Very site specific. Only really good when you're below people. Obviously, you're not going to be pulsing above. The C4 helps. Um, he has a shield now, but if anyone takes a shield over C4, then you're a troll. Um, just, I mean, what sites do you see pulse on? Basements on Clubhouse. Uh, trophy statue on Villa, but he plays below in, in Dining Room. It's, I, you just don't see pulse that much anymore. Pulse is the operator of a cheater, by the way. If you ever see anyone playing Pulse, just make sure they're not cheating because every every cheater does it and goes, oh, no, what they'll do is they'll see you and then they'll put, turn the scanner on them so they can scan you so they know you're there. Or they already know you're there and then they'll be like, shoot you through the floor and you go, oh, sorry, I, what's going on there? They go, oh, no, I scanned you so I knew you were there. Yeah, of course, you yeah, pal. Um, so, yeah, Rook. I put, yeah, just back to Pulse. Just He's all right. Rook. I'm sorry, Rook goes in here. Yes, you've got a 2x on an MP5. Yes, you allow your defenders to be down, but then they can get back up. Give them a little bit more health, but look, it's a one-shot headshot game. If I get a headshot, I aren't going to be able to get up. How many times have you gone down with a rook plate and got back up? It's minimal. I bet you could count on one hand. Smoke. Now, this is an interesting one, isn't it? Smoke goes here for me. Oh, does he go here? Losing that shield has, has affected him. I get why Ubisoft did it. I think it was probably the right decision, maybe, um, because he had everything. Could do everything, area denial, site setup, shield, great guns. Oh, area denial is still really important in Siege. And for that reason, smoke stays there. I really want to put him there, but I don't think I can. I think he's still an A tier operator, still a good op, still so good a good choice to have on the team. Solis. Blah. This is a tough one because Solis should be here every day. But I also want to put Solis here. And I think that's because of the way people are playing her. No, I'm gonna put Solis in S. Being able to run around the map in the prep phase and kill three or four drones, no questions, is important. The, the, one of the best features of Solis is denying the attackers that pre-placed drone that they rely on for entry. So everyone does it, right? You know you're going to be entering bathroom on Villa when you're attacking uh, Games Aviator. And you're going to put your drone in, in Astro. And as soon as you get your rappel up onto Master Balk and check your drone. And then you know Astro's clear, your drone into various different areas. Not having that pre-placed drone. Yes, you lose your drone, that's annoying. But not having that pre-placed drone to be able to get the entry into the map is, is tough. Um, having to take the drone inside the map at the start of the round wastes another 20 30 seconds. It's really tough to play against. Still has to go S tier. Um, Solus for me. Tachanka. I rate Tachanka, man. That LMG is so good. Got a shield, got area denial, but it's. If you can be bothered to learn Tachanka's Shamika launcher physics, he's good. But what you see is people firing fireballs or shamika balls, whatever they're called, just into the general area of what they want to deny. And they bounce off walls and go nowhere where they want to. You, if you can be bothered to learn the lineups for the shamika launcher, it's all right. I actually think Tachanka now is the, the person to play on Oregon Elbow. Take that LMG for the side setup. Um, you've got a bearing as your secondary, remember. So you can take that LMG and a bearing. You can play the shield. And you can deny it. The only thing with Tachanka, as we all know, is swapping from the Shamika launcher back to your main weapon can be tough. With smoke, you throw the smoke, set it off, you've got your SMG-11 back out. Tachanka swapping from the launcher back to your gun, it can take a while. If Tachanka had an, like his um, Shamika launcher was under barrel, like Buck Shotgun, Tachanka's probably up here. Um, but in the minute, he's not. I think the, the, the area that the Shamika launchers uh, deny as well is, is, not, is not particularly big. Thorn. Interesting one, because Thorn's gun is class. Um, got a shield as well, I think, if I'm not wrong. Shield and barbed wire. But the barbed wire works well with the razor blooms because you can slow the attackers down. I don't know, I think Thorn goes there as well, man. Just, I think she's a fun a fun operator to play. Her gun slaps as well, man. It hits so hard. There's tons of damage on it. I think you can put an extended barrel on as well, maybe, if I'm not mistaken. But it, even without it, it slaps. There's no recoil. The thing is with Thorn is how many times you die to a Razor Bloom trap compared to a Capcan trap. Razor Blooms just take so long to detonate once they go off. You can turn around and shoot them quite quickly or you can just run back out the door you just came in. Yes, they're given a good audio cue, but 
just nowhere near as good as other trap operators like Frost or, or Cap Cannon Legion. Thunderbird, just no place for it at the minute, I don't feel. Losing a C4 is tough as well. But, I mean, the heals have improved, you could argue, because the cooldown rate is less, but the heal is less. But yeah, over time, you actually get healed more if you stand by it for a while. Just, I don't feel, again, going back to the Doc and Oryx point about Thunderbird, I just don't feel like there's any reason you should take a Thunderbird over any other operator in B tier or above. Someone get in touch with me and make a case for taking Thunderbird over Castle or for taking Thunderbird over Malusi. I don't think there is one. I think you could argue that every operator in B tier and above benefits the team better than the Thunderbird does for getting, what, 25 HP or whatever it is off the Kona station now. Valkyrie, I'm sorry, Valkyrie still goes in S. Valkyrie will always be S as long as she has three cameras that she can throw wherever she wants in the map. IQ is, a, is an operator you never see anymore, which is one of the main counters to her. If you can throw good Valk cams and you can communicate with the people you're playing with, there's very very few operators that you wouldn't want to see on your team other than a Valk if you're all talking. If you're not talking and you're solo queuing, Valk is still very useful but provides less value. But there's, there's no way Valk isn't S tier at the minute. Vigil. So this is tough because Vigil was always traditionally... Like, way up there, right? I think Vigil probably sits here now. Or here. Would would you... Why would you ever take Vigil over Solus now? You still... You st um, I don't know, because you still do have that problem, don't you, when you're droning someone in and you get the Vigil signal on your drone and you go, oh, hang on a minute, there's a Vigil close here. I don't know where, though. That is still a problem. But you just wait. Like, if you're on your drone, you just wait. And you wait till the signal goes and then you find out where he is. Yeah, I'm putting Vigil down there. But still, one of the most fun operators to use. That gun is so much fun. Wamai. Ooh. Is Wamai better than Jaeger? You know what? I think Wamai is better than... Now I'm looking at that. I think we swap Jaeger and Wamai around. I think Wamai is better than Jaeger. And the, having the 1.5 is a dream. I think... I, I Yeah. Now I'm thinking about it. Well, mine's better than Jaeger. Being able to throw the magnets wherever you want. You get, what is it, six or seven magnets over the course of the round. Being a, One of the beauties of, of Wamai well, actually, is helping Bandit out. Think about Skyscraper Office. You can go downstairs into, is it Closet, that room downstairs, I think, where the window is below the breach, and you can throw Wamai well, magnets underneath. And when someone tries to nade below to get the Bandit off the wall, the Wamai well, magnet just captures it. And if you're playing around bedroom, you just as soon as one's blown up, you throw another. Really, really useful. Yeah, well, mine's greater than it. Warden, right. This is an interesting one. How many flashes and smokes do we see compared to how many Warden players play Warden for the MPX 1.5? Mm. I think we put Warden in B. In terms of utility, if the attackers don't smoke or flash, then he's not much use or use um, sense. So, I think he goes in B. He's got a C4 and a shield, which is helpful. The gun's unreal. It's an absolute... And the running animation's class. That's enough to be here alone, isn't the running animation? But, yeah, I think that's I think that's right. I think that sums us up. I think I think Warden goes in B. I'm just going to double check it now. I don't think there's anyone I'm not. I'm I'm glad I've moved Jaeger down because I wanted to put Jaeger here. And then thinking about Wamai, Wamai is better. He makes he makes Jaeger go down one. But that's it. That's the Year Eight Season Two. Official, bold English man's tier list, and I think I'm happy with it. There's a few that you could argue should be up or down. Like maybe I don't know. Solace is so good. Mirror maybe down. I don't know. That's what I'm going with. We'll leave it to that. Let me know what you think. This has changed because of the TDM meta, and it's all about now trying to slow attackers down from rushing. Um, but yeah, let me know what you think. Cheers for watching. I'll see you next time. Cheers!